very good morning to you all my dear friends so uh, i hope uh, uh, all all the learning that you have done in last few days was really very very fruitful and you are crystal clear on the fundamentals and the basics of java and then we moved on to spring framework and when we moved on to spring framework we started working with uh, the first thing that we started working with uh, uh, you know was um, Uh, the rest controllers uh, which helps you to define the apis then we also talked a lot about apis we talked about what is a get api what is post what is put and delete all of these different apis and then very importantly we moved on to jpa as well see jpa is uh, the heart of your application as far as any any business application that is database oriented uh, and the server side application uh, you know one is a front end uh, part of your application keeping that aside for the moment when it comes to server side application the api implementation the implementation of api and, and if at all it is a business application then jpa is the heart of it why because it is jpa through which you will be accessing the database now there are few more things you know with respect to jpa first i would like to cover that and then i will move on to something very important with respect to service classes and with respect to uh, you know dao classes as well so let me get back to my you know the application that we that that we that we have been working with it's a simple demo application nothing great about it and we are using this application as the base to you know talk about a lot of uh you know important stuff as far as the spring boot is concerned so uh, coming back over here you see this we have we do have a model class and and in that model class we do have training repository created you know the uh, if you can recall it from the last session we created training repository and this was this training it was this training repository uh you know which we used in our training rest controller you can see this we have auto wired the same training repository here and that training repository was used in order to find uh you know the uh, the data find all data now very quickly the other important features of uh, uh you know training uh, I, i mean the repository as such i will just duplicate this you know get mapping and this time i will say v1 slash trainings and i will say the training id now what does this mean is i am defining uh you know an api which will help me to you know v1 slash training slash followed by training id which will help me to uh, get a particular training object by the id by id exactly so you know so i'll say handle get training and i won't say trainings because uh you know the name of the function will not be trainings because you are getting one single training but i'll say by id here but you can see this here this will definitely be plural that's the naming standard that's the naming convention this will always be plural you know v1 slash trainings and training id that means if you want to translate if you want me to transliterate this this is this is how i will do it uh <coughs> right so if you want me to transliterate this then in that case i will say that i am getting a particular training from the trainings as a resource you know so trainings is a resource training is a resource and from the group of trainings i want one particular training the id of which is whatever will be passed as a parameter by the client when i say client it can be a browser application it can be a mobile application it can be a you know a postman kind of an application whatever any client that would send an http request okay so how will that http request look like when it is actually fired from postman or from mobile app or from a browser app it will look like this you know localhost colon 8080 slash v1 slash trainings slash and then the training id you know so 101 maybe 102 maybe 222 whatever you know this whatever you pass after this you know this is called a path variable i repeat this is known as the path variable so this path variable why because this is the part of the path and whenever you use a when when do you think you will be using a path variable only and only when you have this particular variable here you know that you intend to uh, you know provide after the path is the identity of the resource see your training id is the identity of the resource when i go to sql pro and i start my uh, you know i connect to my database you see i go to my trainer and then you have Uh, you know training here you see this training demo is a table that i have you know you remember yesterday we did, i mean uh, uh, i mean in the previous session we did work on this and you see the structure your trading id is the primary key correct that is the identification of this particular resource right so that's what it is it will always be a path variable and not a query parameter what is a query parameter we will come to that a bit later so we have got here you know a particular training so when i say particular training of course i won't be returning the list back i will return back a particular training object it's not find all when you say find all give me the list of all the trainings but if i want to find one single training then i will be returning one single training object from here and then instead of saying list of training see this is how i'm writing you know see this so instead of saying list the training training i'll say training you know one single object of class training so uh, you see this and then training report dot i'll say find by id 
and whatever is the training ID passed as a parameter. Now, how do I get the training ID here? Whatever user passes, how do I get the value of the training ID here? I will say at the rate path variable, okay, and I'll say integer and I will say training ID. That's how it is. Okay, so this at the rate path variable tells your runtime environment, especially the Spring Boot framework, that the value that the user, user has passed in the path after trainings, you know, see this is in a curly brace bracket, that means it stands for actually a variable. This 3233 3, 3 will be replaced, you know, this training ID will be replaced with 3233. 3, 3. This in fact, entire expression here will be replaced with whatever is the whatever is the value passed by the user after trainings, and that value will come into this variable. So I will just simply say training ID here. Okay, I'll just say training ID and you see this I'm getting this uh, uh, find by ID but you know what from JPA 2.x onwards your finder methods which is supposed to return one value I repeat the finder methods which is supposed to return one value does not return the immediate object or the actual object it returns to you an optional object you know optional of training and if you see this optional is was introduced in let me import this java.util.optional this optional was actually introduced in java 1.8 okay so this optional object here I'll say training I'll say opt as this is the optional object and then training report dot find by id so this is what uh, uh, you know we have uh, uh, you know written over here so find by id is an important uh, and from where do you get this find by id you see this in the training repository we did not declare this at all but then find by id is actually available in an interface you see jp jpa repository it extends from uh, paging and sorting repository that extends from CRUD repository. What does C CRUD stand for? CRUD create, read, update, delete. Create, read, update, delete. And when I control click on this and use control O in order to get the list of the methods, you see find by ID is declared here. You can see this find by ID and it's a generic type. That means this function can be used uh, you know, as a template function for any class. It can be customer, it can be training, it can be product, whatever it is, right? That's how it is. So find by ID is already declared here. We don't have to declare find by ID explicitly in our training repository at all. It is automatically inherited from these you know super interfaces now point is who is going to implement it we don't need to implement why because we have told our repository that this repository is actually for which class training and training has been mapped to which table training demo and we have already mentioned that the primary key in that training demo table happens to be this particular property that means it will try to find a, a column called training id in the table training demo and it will treat that as the primary key it will consider assume that as a primary key and it will automatically generate a select statement and that select statement would be what select star from training where id is equal to you know training id is equal to whatever is passed as a parameter here as simple as this so we don't need to do anything uh, i mean with respect to implementation of find by id it is automatically deduced so how do i get the actual training object but then this is the optional object so if I say if training you can see opt you can see this here opt dot is present now optional is an object which that's the reason why it is called an optional that means in that the object will be there or it may not be there for example if I try to pass a training ID in the API which does not exist then in that case optional object will be empty but if at all whatever I pass over here does exist in the database, for example, in our case here, one and two, right, is existing. But if I pass three, two, three, three, it does not exist. So then in that case, optional training opt will be empty. But otherwise, if it has a value, that means if I pass one over here or two, which is actually there in the database, it will fire a select statement and it will be successful in getting the value. And in such a case, optional will not be empty. That means is present will be true right it will be true so if it is true that means training opt dot is present you see here in java you can write equal equal to true here or else you can just leave it as it is you know so it understands that it is by default equal equal to if you don't read write equal equal to true it assumes that it is equal equal to true okay so training opt dot if is present if it is present then in that case i say return training opt you can see that dot I'll say get now get is the actual function on the optional object which returns to you a value I repeat which returns to you a value if at all that object is there otherwise get will return a null but I have written return uh, training opt dot get only and only if it is present so there is no question of this being null at all if it is present that means the object is definitely there and this will never return a null but if it is not present I say else then in that case what will I do I will not return a value instead I will throw a runtime exception here and that exception would be what i'll say no uh, record or no training you know that's a better way of saying it no training found okay with id 
uh, with id as i'll say training id so whatever was passed as a parameter i do not have that in my database at all right through new sorry it has to be through new runtime exception this is how you throw exceptions here and then there is no meaning of return statement here because either you are returning or else you are throwing an exception so you are in any case going uh, you know out of this function so beyond this point whatever lines you write does not really make sense at all so i'll remove that return statement from here right that's how it is that's how it is as simple as this this is how you typically implement or typically use the finder method by id find by id on a repository so that you get an object which will actually be an optional if at all it was successful and if it got the data by that id then in that case is present will be true and then you can use dot get method on the optional object to actually get the object or else you can just throw an exception or you do something else you know maybe you may want to do something else right that's how it is now let's run this and see the results i will select the spring boot you know uh, application here uh, let me close this you know so that there is no okay let me run this now so when i run this right okay and now i'll go to postman and in postman i will say v1 slash okay I'll say v1 slash 8080 v1 slash I'll say trainings okay slash one and I when I click on send I you see oh there is an error v1 slash training slash one localhost 8080 what is the error now let's see what the error is okay the driver is automatically registered that's fine you can pull and stuff and all resolved missing URI template training ID for method parameter type integer trainings okay slash two okay it says missing uri training id that means i have misspelled it you see this here you can see this training id here and training id here there is a spelling mistake so this must match you can see this control c i'll say control v now this matches and now i go back and i will read run my application so it couldn't really find that variable training id to which it can put in the variable here right so those two must be same now when i click on send you see i get the data if i say one and then i say send and i get the data for you know training id one but if i pass something else it will throw an exception from there but here i'm not going to get that ex exception i'm going to get this internal server error 500 is the you can see this 500 is the status code if there is any exception from the server side of this kind then in that case you know it's it automatically throws a 500 internal server error and this is the api which has resulted into this error all right so here it is and this since you are, you are throwing an exception here on the console you will see this you will get you're going to get something like this you see this okay no training found with id 1323 you got that okay this was the message actually that we had printed over here but i'll tell you i will keep this uh, you know as it is i will not uh, uh, you know uh, remove that and i'll just comment it but now i will show you a better way of doing it see we have been actually returning just simply the objects over here right list of training and then training over here this is the kind of uh, you know object that we have been returning which is absolutely fine it works fine but then there is an issue over here there is a challenge here what if i want to actually return back an error uh, or, or i want to tell the client that you see it's not that uh, something uh, you know unexpected has ap happened you have passed a training id and i want to gracefully tell the client that you see the status code is 404 what is 404 not found i repeat what is 404 not found i want to tell the client you see the id that you have sent actually uh, you know that's not found i don't want to throw an exception as such i want to return a response back i want re i repeat i want to return a response back with a special status code called status code called 404 uh, 404 which is not found so what do i do in such a case and if at all it is found successful if whatever training id is passed as a parameter if that is found then in that case yes i would want that to uh, you know uh, i mean i want uh, the response entity to be uh, you know sent back or a response to be sent back with the status code as status code as okay let me see whether i have already covered this in the last session or not no i have not covered this response type at all okay so coming back over here see this so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just change this okay let me do one thing uh, i will not do this I will not uh, you know do this instead I will comment the whole thing okay and then I will write so you can you can you can take a look at that code also which is okay but you know the better way of writing is this you know you send back you send back a response entity 
okay and that response entity will contain which object training right so it will eventually uh, uh, you know uh, serialize the training object and send it to your browser but you know along with the status code so what i'm going to do i want to return training of opt dot get i'll say new response entity over here see what i'm doing you know it's so very simple and easy to understand new response entity so it's the same customer object you know because response entity is supposed to be of type training and otherwise i'll say response entity comma i'll say http status dot okay what does this mean what does this mean that means things things are fine okay is what 200 is in you can see this okay is what status code 200 always remember status code 200 coming back from the server is absolutely fine i mean okay that means server did not encounter any error and server is saying that okay whatever api you have you have invoked i am returning the response back with everything is good status is okay okay means what actually here in spring we are calling it status as okay but actually the status code is 200 I repeat the status code is 200 okay so coming back over here now i'll say throw new now i will not throw an exception from here i will not throw an exception instead i'll say return you can see this i'll say return new response entity and here i will say because i do not have a customer object at all right i don't want to send null or anything i do not have a uh, customer object at all so in such a case response entity does have a see this is the constructor of a class this is how you i have constructed new response entity i have constructed uh, the object of that class i have created a new object of that class it takes two parameters one is whatever the object is supposed to go in the response and the other is the status code but you do have an overloaded constructor you can see this when i control click over here you see you've got a response entity which takes just the http status you have a response entity which takes the body uh, right as well as the http status object right and then response entity with a multi-value map there are several you can see response entity and so on there are so many you can see overloaded constructors over here you have got one you've got two you've got three and then you've got four and then you've got five all of these are the different constructors of response entity you may cons use any one of these constructors in order to construct the response and send it back to the browser now i will keep it simple i have used one constructor over here which takes two arguments one is the body of the response itself so what will go in the body of the response and the second is the status code here i will use that constructor which gives only and only the status code not the body because i do not have the body i could not find the customer object at all is present returns false so i will come here with http status as okay all right this is our list. that's it now in such a case see what happens i will not get any exception here on my console rather very you know gracefully oh so sorry i'm wrong should it be should it be status as okay no it must be not found you can see this not found in which case what is the status 404 okay so the status code is 404 okay let me once again you know run this right so if it is not found okay if is present is false then i do this so there won't be any exception here as such you know but then when i you know if i say one I get the value you can see this here status code is 200 because it executed this now i say two again status code will be 200 and i get another value everything is cool okay i'm just clearing the console right but now i'm going to say three which does not exist you can see this three does not exist okay so i go back to my postman now when i click on send you can see this i don't get any data and i get status is 404 not found you can see that my dear friend okay you can see this why because what is and see there is no exception here at all because we returned back gracefully uh, the status code code called not found which is actually 404 status code you can see this 404 status code over here not found and the browser understands or the mobile app wherever you have written the code that code that javascript code will understand that okay uh, you know the the the, tra the the training id that was passed as a parameter does not exist and then it will give an appropriate error message to the user and so on all right that's how it is so it's always a good practice to return the response entity back rather than the direct object response entity helps you to construct the response with the appropriate with appropriate statuses like here in this case okay here in this case not found while passing the body of the response i repeat while passing the body here in our case what is the body supposed to be of type training okay but there is another overloaded constructor which bypasses the body so body will be nothing it will be an empty body but yes with the status code as whatever is specified here right friends that's how it is and i have just given you explanation on how to work with response entities you will always work with response entities and whatever is the body supposed to be that body will go over here so now let me go back here you see remember this list of training handle get trainings here also don't you think i must do this response entity 
okay and then i'll say list of always a good habit you know always all uh, right and then here i will say what new response entity here i don't want to check whether it is found or not found because if if at all it's empty it's empty fine if there are no uh, trainings created here that's okay okay but then i will just say http status as okay fine and that's how it is see this that's what i'm returning back okay it compiles successfully so always a good habit to work with response entities you must return back response entities right this was a very important point that i wanted to make with you all okay